Today we're visiting the beautiful and historic old part of Rouen in Normandy, France. This place has two, it had two important things for us. It was one of our favorite towns we've actually ever been in. I really loved it. It has one of the coolest museums that we've seen anywhere. And it was also one of the grossest experiences we've had in France, which I will go into a tiny bit later. But if you love medieval history of France and England, if you love the Plantagenet Kings and the Hundred Years War and Joan of Arc, the War of the Roses and everything in between, you will love Rouen. You need to come here. It's an ancient city. It was founded by the Gauls and conquered by the Romans in the first century BC. It fell to Rollo the Viking in the ninth century. He's actually buried here. He is the ancestor of William the Conqueror. The cathedral was consecrated in 1063 here with William himself in attendance before he was the conqueror. So if you love history, this is really a beautiful place to come and walk the old part of Rouen. We really enjoyed it. We were here on a market day, so you can see this covered area and there was a lot of outdoor stalls set up. Not super touristy. We were here in, um, I believe it was April or May that we were here. But just look at all of this wonderful display that was going on. It was it was a surprisingly big covered market. It's under it's outside, but open air ish. It's under a roof. But all of these gorgeous cheeses. Oh my goodness! You could just go on forever with just this counter of cheese. So we kind of just enjoyed a quick stroll. We didn't really buy anything here, but it was lovely to walk through and see all of the wonderful variety and lots of great things to grab a picnic if you wanted to put yourself together a lunch. Here, this would be a great place to stop. Make sure you come on a market day and look at all of the beautiful displays, seafood and cheeses and produce to die for. Just a gorgeous market space. You'll actually find three famous Plantagenet family members buried in the cathedral here. You'll find the tomb marker of the Empress Matilda, who was Henry II's mother, and two of their children. Henry and Eleanor has two sons buried here. Henry the Young King, who died of dysentery at 28, and the famous Richard the Lionheart. His heart is buried here. The rest of his body was buried at Fontevraud with his parents. The third Plantagenet son to be king, King John, was crowned the Duke of Normandy here by the Bishop of Rouen in 1199. And then in 1203, King John actually took his captive nephew Arthur, who had tried to overthrow him and take the crown. He had him imprisoned in Falaise to start with and then possibly or probably sent on to Rowan here, where he was never seen again, and legend has it that he was killed, probably on John's orders and possibly by John himself. Skipping ahead a couple hundred years, if you love Joan of Arc and the Hundred Years' War, Joan of Arc at 19 was actually burned at the stake here in the market square in the old part of Rowan. She was convicted of heresy and burned at the stake on May 30th of 1431. There's a beautiful statue here and a marker outside of the rebuilt church. There is an Église Sainte Jeanne d'Arc, which was built here on the square in 1979 to replace a much older church that had been destroyed in World War II. The current very unusual architecture you'll see on this church includes a covered area for the market, which we were able to visit when we were there, as well as put to use some of the 500-year-old stained glass from the prior church, which I think is a very cool way to reuse that. There's also a beautiful cross on the spot where Joan of Arc was burned on that sad day in 1431. The square here is really amazing. Um, it was lovely to be here and there are beautiful restaurants here. There is the oldest restaurant in Normandy and also considered one of the oldest restaurants in France itself, La Corone. It has been in business since 1345. We tried and failed <laughs> to get in here for lunch on the day we were here. So if you would like to eat at the oldest restaurant in Normandy, definitely check on reservations prior to a walk-up situation at lunch. That does not work and we were made that was made apparent to us. We did end up finding a lunch somewhere else, but that ties into our story for a bit later. About 45% of Rouen was destroyed during World War II, so many of the medieval buildings are restorations, but it would be fascinating to know if or how many of these windows looked out on Joan's final tragic day. Rouen passed back and forth more than once during the Hundred Years' War, and the personal tragedies that ensued will be probably never known. There is one of those haunting Christmas stories here that we've not heard of, though. When England's King Henry V besieged Rouen from July of 1418, by December, nearly six months later, the town had expelled 
12,000 of its poor residents to conserve supplies. However, Henry would not let them cross the siege line and they were forced to huddle in the ditch dug at the city wall. They suffered terribly from hunger and exposure. On Christmas Day, he kindly sent two priests to give them food, but the day after Christmas, they resumed dying in that ditch. Interestingly, the casualty report for that siege says that the civilian dead numbered 12,000. Rouen went on to surrender on January 19th of 1419. The tables were turned in 1449 and 1450 when Charles VII took Rouen back from the English, eventually ending England's claims to the French crown and earning himself the name of Charles the Victorious. One of the most beautiful things to see in Rouen is this clock from the 1300s, and of course it's amazing to wonder if Joan or Henry V or Charles VII rode under this very clock. This has been here for so long, and it is decorated with incredible detail, and you will notice I've heard, I did not see while I was there, but you, I've heard that there is an angel on the clock, which you'll see has its head on upside down, which was not by mistake, but was instead done by a worker who was disgruntled at being paid late. So people, people haven't changed much, have they? Just a few steps from the square, you can also visit this church dating from 1228 called the Temple saint eloi It was used as a church and rebuilt and re, you know, and renovated and, and expanded over the centuries, but during the revolution, it was actually converted to basically a storage house and it was actually, I believe, a lead factory for some time before being restored to church status by Napoleon in 1803. It was damaged heavily again in World War II and then restored to being a church in 1950. It's sadly fairly run down on the outside, but it's beautiful inside, definitely worth a stop, even though it doesn't look like much. Um, when we were there anyway, the grounds were in sort of sad repair. Like I said, we visited here on a market day. We took an easy train up from Paris and made this a day trip from Paris. It's easy to do in a day. You can get up there, walk around, and get back. The train station is located sort of at the top of the town. It's a, it's a hill you can walk. We easily walk down it, it's, but it's quite a hike if you're walking. But there is a metro, I believe, in Rouen, so you could make use of that or a taxi and just get yourself down to the old part of town. We walked it. Um, you do, in the walking, you get to go past a tower that is called the Tour Jean d'Arc, which is what is left of the original castle of Rouen. That's all that's left, and it, legend has it that this is where she was held for the four months prior to her execution. In our walking, we also found a really cool museum that we stopped in, and I have already made a video about it. It was a, an amazing wrought iron metal museum. If you're into anything ancient metal, go check out the museum here, Metalwork Museum. And there was a lovely park that we stopped in on the way back up and just enjoyed the, the ducks and the waterway here. But what's amazing about Rouen, once you get through the Market Street and all of these gorgeous medieval back streets and buildings, you come out into a square and you have the cathedral with, it's just literally breathtaking. If you've seen Notre Dame in Paris, this is so much more astonishing to look at. It's, it is just mind boggling. It was so beautiful. So we did get into here and got to see a lot of the tombs that are here. There is a statue of Joan of Arc here inside the cathedral and legend says that the sword with the statue is rumored to be her own. I don't know if that's true or how you would prove it, but it would be amazing if it's true. And when we had finished in the cathedral, we moved on to a lunch at a cafe and also our most disgusting experience in France, or possibly ever. And I won't go into too much detail, but when you are in Rouen, let me just give you a touristy tidbit. Unless things have changed since we were there, do not ask where the public toilets are. And if you do and you are directed to the one that is on the exterior outside of the cathedral, um, let me just say don't even open the door. Go find a cafe and ignore that public bathroom. If it hasn't changed, um, imagine a toilet they installed 10 years ago and no one ever came back to check on it. So I recommend just wandering through the market and then time it so that you can go through the cathedral and see all these magnificent spaces. And make sure you look up all the tombs that are here and any of the, the things that are here because you will find as I did, I missed some of them and I know they were there, but I didn't know until after. So we found a cafe and had a lovely um, crepe lunch and met the cat at the cafe. It was, I think it's called the Cafe au Chat, which is just the cat, the cafe of the cats. And 
this cat just hung out on the little um, sort of astroturf area with us. And he, I thought, you know, he's loose. What if he wanders off? But every time he, he kind of went outside his little boundary, the old guy inside would come out with a leaf blower and, and shoo him back in with the leaf blower. So that was funny. But yes, lovely cafe. Um, didn't have much better of a bathroom, but highly do not recommend going in the public bathroom in Rowan. That's all I'm going to say about that. Anyway, lovely trip here. If you love history and you love medieval and you love Joan of Arc and you love markets and cathedrals, Rowan should be a can't miss. Do not miss Rowan in Normandy. It is just absolutely a wonderful day to spend here. I wouldn't spend more than a day and I wouldn't even like spend a night and do it in two days. Just do a quick day trip up, but definitely so worth a stop. We loved it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.